Hi, you had a question about type 1 and type 2 error. So I put some material up here on my whiteboard, if you will, to help uh, answer that question of yours. Your question falls under the topic heading of hypothesis testing. And type 1, type 2 error, uh, that falls into what's called a decision matrix. For your decision matrix along the top, uh, we have to decide what are the results due to. Um, and the results could be due to sampling error or they could be due to a real treatment effect. Then we have to make a decision to either reject the null hypothesis or to retain the null hypothesis. Sometimes the results will be due to nothing other than just sampling error. What do I mean by that? Well, consider our, our misguided researcher here whose hypothesis is that spaghetti improves IQ. And so he goes out and he randomly selects 25 people and he gives them spaghetti and then he tests their IQ. Now, he's going to compare the average IQ of these people who have eaten spaghetti to the population. And if the group's average is significantly above 100, his decision is, hey, let's reject the null hypothesis. I've got something real going on here. Most of the time, when he looks at his evidence or her evidence, uh, the 25 randomly selected people will have had an IQ somewhere around 100. Uh, sometimes they'll be a little bit below, sometimes they'll be a little bit above. And so most of the time, if you believe spaghetti improves IQ and you collect the evidence, um, you're not going to have very much evidence to say spaghetti improves IQ. <laughs> um, in rare circumstances, you might have just happened to pick a group of really smart people and having nothing to do with spaghetti, uh, when you later tested their IQ, they, they tested really well. Okay, so sampling error. Um, our null hypothesis is always that our results are due to just sampling error. It had nothing to do with treatment, it was just that the people you randomly picked uh, happened to be, you know, in this case, really bright. So we make our decision. Do we reject the null or retain the null? Well, we consider what's the probability of getting our results due to sampling error, just due to chance. If our uh, probability is um, less than 0.05, then we go ahead and we reject the null hypothesis. In all of these cases, we actually um, probably would not reject the null hypothesis. We would reject the null hypothesis if we saw something, you know, really, you know, more extreme, like uh, over here. Okay. So if we saw uh, something really extreme, this group of people just happened to be very bright uh, to begin with before we ever gave them spaghetti, and we looked and go, oh wow, these people are super bright. Um, we're going to have made a mistake. It's called a type 1 error. Type 1 error is where you mistakenly reject the null hypothesis. Uh, your results were due to sampling error and who knew, right? You just saw that the sample mean was really high and you thought, hey, spaghetti, it's great for IQ, and you rejected it. So type 1 error, um, you might say that it's due to bogus evidence, but again, it's truly sampling error. So bogus evidence. And um, the probability that you will make a type 1 error when result is due to sampling error is, um, well, it's called alpha. And our alpha uh, is set to 0.05. So when, when the result is simply due to sampling error, you're going to make a type 1 error 0.05 of the time. Because 0.05 of the time, you'll reject uh, the null hypothesis when, when your results look really good. Okay, um, if sampling error is true, on the other hand, you're going to make the correct decision 95% um, of the time, and that'll be good. All right, well, let's consider now the other possibility. Let's say your results are due to the treatment, that, you know, hey, uh, the treatment is actually helpful. So research hypothesis exercise reduces stress. In that case, um, you get, hopefully, if over here is stress, uh, we would find out that people who exercise a lot had really low stress. And if that's the case, we're going to say, wow, look at how low the stress is. That's most likely due to treatment. And in that case, we'd have uh, a correct decision. On the other hand, let's say that we um, had a group of people who were, oh man, they were incredibly stressed to begin with, extremely stressed. And they exercised, and it brought their stress level down. And so here was their eventual stress level. Well, we compare this group's stress level to the population, and we see, oh, not much of a difference. That's a type 2 error, where we have insufficient evidence.